Welcome, everybody, to our weekly Ecosystem Office Hours call. I am your host, Jinx, and we are joined, as always, by the best and brightest in the pocket ecosystem. Uh, lots of excitement this morning. Uh, we had our, our new uh, Korean exchange up bid open up, and uh, that's caused a bunch of action and volatility in the market, which always gets the uh, the DGENs uh, laughing and giggling and getting into all the insanity. So uh, for anyone who's interested in the trading side of things, uh, definitely go check out Upbit, assuming you have access to that marketplace. Uh, we we'll kick things off with our uh, uh, community announcement stuff. Zach, you, uh, you want to talk to us about uh, the at-large of the Pocket Network? Yeah, at large. Um, um, I, I think most of you know we had a couple of proposals that went through last week um, or in the last couple of days. So um, the DAO, I believe it's official, has voted CryptoCorn as the DAO board observer. Congratulations to him. Um, and we've also unanimously approved the tier one market making, which I see Dermot's here. Um, but very exciting, which means we can start, uh, start getting the liquidity that we need so that way we can be listed on a tier one change Dermot, not to put you on the spot but i don't know if there's anything you want to say about that as far as next steps or well that was pretty he just disconnects <laughs> guess he doesn't Dermot want to say said, anything i'm out yeah exactly <laughs> Dermot, i don't know if you heard that but i did i wanted to see if you uh oh he's having troubles it looks like he, maybe we can throw it back to him but um so the proposals passed we have a community call tomorrow um, where we'll talk a little bit more about some of these uh, details. Um, and then, like you said, there's the, the exchange listing today, which I, I think you uh, rightly pointed it. Like, there's been a lot of fun conversations, and hopefully everybody woke up this morning with a what the fuck happened last night. Um, so it's fun to, to have that kind of engagement. So pass it back to you. Yeah. Any day that there's 200 messages waiting for me in Telegram, it's either a good day or a terrible day. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad it leaned on the positive side. So hopefully we see more of it. Dermot, did you want to add anything in regards to the liquidity proposal? I'm going to take that as a no since he's still muted. I assume he's a user of BT, uh, British Telecom, given his difficulties uh, connecting. All right. Well, uh, on the gateway side, uh, Fred, Gabby, y'all got any uh, gateway updates or announcements? I did see that there was a deprecation this week of uh, some of the older stuff. Uh, yeah. Uh, just to reiterate, we'll be deprecating Go Really and all Go Really based test nets for us. That's Go Really, Go Really Archival, and Polygon Mumbai on Monday, April 1st. This is not an April Fool's. <laughs> um, we do see that uh, Holeski and uh, Sapoli are both available, and uh, Polygon's new test chain, uh, uh, Amoyo, what is that called? Whatever, uh, that's that's going to be scheduled for uh, an upcoming launch soon as well. And do we have? Uh, nope, don't see anybody from Nodis on the call, so no updates from them. Shane, you want to talk to us about protocol? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so uh, a few cool things uh, happened this past week. Uh, the testnet team uh, that's been helping with the private testnet net has been given a lot of awesome feedback. Um, so. It, it's been really great because they've been essentially uh, troubleshooting, uh, deploying uh, relay miners, which are suppliers uh, in Shannon. And so uh, getting that all kind of fleshed out, figuring out where there's, you know, user experience issues, where the document, uh, the documentation uh, might not be uh, explaining things properly. All that's been fantastic. So a lot of great progress. Uh, on that front of just getting a lot more feedback to uh, improve the uh, onboarding experience for uh, uh, testnet, which ultimately leads to Shannon itself. Um, an exciting, uh, the uh, uh, exciting uh, completion was actually the uh, claims improve uh, life uh, uh, PR and, and feature was, was fully merged. So uh, claims and proofs are, are uh, uh, 
definitely a uh, more mature thing now on testnet. So that's exciting. And then the tokenomics module uh, was actually started. Oshansky uh, put out a pull request for that. Um, and what this does is it doesn't, uh, it's what it does is it lays the foundation for the tokenomics module. What can happen inside the tokenomics module is like ultimately limitless. Like we can do any kind of tokenomics we want to, uh, but what this module does is it kind of puts the framework and the, like the base layer of the module uh, fully working inside of uh, Shannon. Um, and then we can keep building upon it uh, in, in cool ways uh, in the future, which is stuff that I'm uh, continuing to work on. Uh, so yeah, so that's all the protocol kind of progress. And then on my own side, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just finishing up today a, uh, a Shannon overview. It's quite a large Shannon kind of overview and migration. I've been working with the protocol team uh, and PNF uh, to get all of this uh, information uh, and large parts of it were written directly from uh, Oshansky from protocol. Uh, and then I've written parts of it. And what it should do is it should actually give people a very comprehensive look at Shannon uh, on what it's achieving, uh, how it will do certain things, uh, and then specifically looking at more like what are the like what are the specific differences um, and what you know what would people need to kind of plan for and and, and expect with the Morris to Shannon uh, migration. So, anywho, it's a lot of work. Uh, has been going over the, into this for over the past couple of weeks, but really excited about it. Uh, currently, um, it's going through internal review basically this week, and then next week uh, or late this week or something, hopefully kind of get an initial draft out to the community as well. So that's at least the plan. And uh, uh, I'll be out of office for about two weeks in, in April, starting the 1st. Um, so uh, just FYI, I'll, I'll be out of the office. Uh, and then I'll be returning on the 15th. Um, so yeah, exciting times though, exciting times. Nice, I've seen a few of the, uh, the ping dashboards from some of the folks doing some of the private testing and it all looks super cool. It's nice to have that level of uh, data and everything clearly presented. And I've uh, seen a few of the folks in the community are working on other various uh, reporting tools, uh, explorers and dashboards and the like. Looking forward to seeing all that come out. Uh, James, can I jump back in? Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Zach. So we're on my first cup of coffee here on the West Coast, but um, now that my brain's online, there are a couple more things I wanted to call out. One, um, Shane, you didn't say it, but I'm going to call it out. Shane's celebrating. He's got a big two weeks, getting married. Um, and so super excited for you and his time off. So while Shane's out, definitely feel free to route questions through me to try to get um, people signed. We're... Um, just trying to protect uh, the people that are busy. And so maybe I can route and answer questions while he's out versus um, going to like the protocol team directly with stuff that we can solve. So general call out for congratulations, Shane. Super excited for you. Um, and send me his work instead of other people. And then I want to, um, two more announcements. I think the creds proposal, if it's not up today, it's going to be up later today. Uh, so the new governance, if people do have questions, we'll talk a little about it tomorrow again, but we took everybody's feedback from a couple of weeks ago um, and that proposal is ready to, ready to be launched. And then, oh my God, I should have wrote this down. I had a third one. Oh, some of the stuff Shane was saying, we're, we're starting what we're calling like an RFP bonanza. And so we'll talk a little about that tomorrow, but um, needs that the protocol is going to have going into Shannon and these are things like, because we're integrating with Cosmos, what can we build um, for the new, the new chain? What can we build that both Pocket and Cosmos might need? Or what do specific um, gateways, node runners, anybody in the ecosystem that has um, a need, how can we start making basically an RFP to pay people to build the tooling that we're looking for? And so if people have ideas or if they want to just kind of sit on what they think would be really beneficial to the entire ecosystem, would love to uh, get those on paper tomorrow during our call. And then the last piece is um, the retro PGF uh, proposal, not the proposal, the outline is gonna come out, um, I think later this week as well. So keep your eyes peeled. I think people are gonna see a lot of um, opportunities to get paid for some of the impactful work they've done over the last months. And 
um, hopefully starting this trend of having people focus on work that um, will make a big difference long term and will be rewarded for that. So long set of new announcements. Beautiful. Any questions about any of that? Well, congratulations, Shane. We'll let you have um, 48 to 72 hours uh, with your new bride, depending on our schedule, and then we'll expect you back after that. I can did. <laughs> uh, Steve, not to put you on the spot, but any chance uh, you're finished with that paper and want to chat about it a little bit? Hey, I am close. I am close, um, but I'm happy to, to to chat about it. I'm uh, putting together a uh, what I think is, is is kind of a way to position Pocket for uh, AI systems developers. Uh, I've been that, that that's what I do. That's my uh, day job, and and mostly for uh, enterprise clients. And more and more, uh, the uh, the question about how you get uh, AI systems to um, uh, across organizational boundaries, most mostly to to collaborate is uh, is including uh, blockchain kinds of topics, and and that uh, comes back to well, you know, how to how do the AI agents get access to uh, blockchain data, you know, to to, to read and write and, and all of that kind of stuff, which aligns with what Pocket does, of course, um, and, and to to illustrate the the opportunity and in, in a, uh, like a simple way. Uh, today, if you were to go into Chat GPT and ask for the, the you know the current weather, current temperature in St. Petersburg or San Francisco or wherever, it could easily respond with um, accurate you know uh, the accurate temperature. But if you were to do the same thing and say something like you know hey what's the current balance of this ETH address, uh, you would just basically get back a sorry go someplace else to find that and you know it might point you to um, ether scan or something like that, but uh, but the future is these systems are are going to be able to seamlessly interoperate uh, and, and, and integrate with blockchain data, and so uh, there's um, platforms out there that are providing essentially what what equates to like tooling for AI agents, and for clarification, um, like uh, usually like we're talking about large language models, but uh, chat GPT is not a large language model or, you know, or like Gemini is not a large language model. It's a, a system that's composed of multiple language models, you know, multiple, uh, code, code tooling and, 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 and rag, uh, uh systems and, you know, lots of other things. So you, you're not seeing the result of one model. So when we talk about like inference to, to like o models, that that's, a, a small piece of what a uh, like what these larger systems do, um, but they they do need to access the blockchain. They 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 do need a pathway for making that happen. And and so what I'm I'm trying to outline in this paper is is basically what I see as the uh, the opportunity there, uh, and um, perhaps how uh, Pocket could position itself to uh, to take advantage of that opportunity. Yeah, one of the things that I think is so interesting about uh, the model that you're proposing is that unlike some of the other uh, um, things we're poking at, we're not talking about functionally any additional development on the protocol um, to be able to offer like existing uh, uh, agent models and, and existing RAG services, uh, which, you know, given the, the lead time on developing new solutions, that's certainly an appealing way to, to get the ball rolling and get us serving AI related requests uh, in short order. Yeah, I probably shouldn't even like I posted something online. I probably shouldn't even have used the term rag. Uh, you know, uh, essentially it's API. You know, so m m most rag is is just sort of like a a, a fancy acronym for um, allowing language models to use external data, uh, which in many cases is uh, facilitated through an API call. And and so if the language models understand that Pocket is an option for interacting with uh, you know various blockchains, um, they can default to using Pocket. 
uh, but to, to, to make that happen, uh, my you know, recommendation in the paper would be to engage uh, with uh, projects that are happening on the AI builder side uh, to, to, to really get traction there. And, and while nothing technically needs to be built, uh, there, there would need to be communications that um, like make it clear how this is done. So code examples, which you could use AI to, to, to generate. Um, and, and specifically, the projects that I would recommend uh, starting with are like Langchain. Um, and you know, if anybody's not familiar with that project, if you go to like I think Langchain.com, um, but it's 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 the the oldest and um, you know old 2022, but it's the you know oldest and most mature uh, of the the platforms that I would refer to as like multi agent orchestration platforms. And you know, their their job is to essentially coordinate the efforts of multiple models and systems and code and everything else to uh, be able to perform tasks that are more complex than any one of those could use or could uh, complete itself. And within the, the, the lane chain um, ecosystem construct, you can essentially create what are sort of the equivalent of like plugins, uh, you know, tools that the agents can use to to do, you know, different things. Uh, there's only two other providers of uh, like AI related tasks, or, or not AI, but blockchain related uh, tooling. Uh, so Pocket could get in there and and start basically saying like, hey, here is a tool that you can use to um, to to get access to 60 plus chains and and here's some examples of of how to do that I, I, the the part i'm I, I haven't been as close on the like the pocket front for the past year because uh of uh, some other things i've been working on but the you know the part that would make it a little bit different than like a weather api is there's lots of weather apis that you can call that are free um, there's not a like a default way to do that that i'm aware of i, I think there used to be like the um ultras nodes and stuff and i know you know the, the the gateways now and i think like nodies has uh some like endpoints but uh some of that stuff i would need help navigating uh because i don't and shane's been helping and uh, uh me navigate some of that so um i don't have like all the answers but i think i have like the like a general approach that uh perhaps could work yeah, Perry's not on the call today, but he had mentioned that he was also familiar with uh, like a RAG based service, which sounds fairly similar, would, you know, provide access to a series of, of uh, microservices and, and I think even incentivized access um, for, for serving them up or helping to support them. So, I, you know, like I would love to see all of y'all collaborating on that. For anyone who doesn't know, there is an AI chat channel uh, in the Pocket Discord here. Uh, very much encourage you to come and join that channel and just kick your thoughts in. Uh, if if you're interested in the topic at all, you don't necessarily have to be an engineer. Uh, but you know, if you have some ideas or you want to follow along progress or if you just want to cheer on the the development as it goes, uh, please add the AI chat channel to your favorites and uh, jump in and say hello. Uh, Zatar, I thought I saw you typing in chat. Did you have something uh, you wanted to present or questions? Hey, uh, just to mute, I, I think I can just jump in to say, Steve, that, that's super exciting. Um, and it's awesome that you're bringing all the expertise uh, and insight uh, to help pocket out as it navigates what is this really exciting and uh, potentially massive market um, and, and and focusing on what is right in front of us as well, I think is uh, is really smart. And so this AI working group that um, Ad's referred to after the last call is, is being formed as we speak. And I'll, I'll post the forum on this lately. And the, the idea here is to actually start with a really simple articulation from the technical side actually of what pocket can do and focusing on what it can be in the future in terms of what it can enable for this market and actually if you really dig into it for those that understand pocket well we'll actually see this is kind of actually painting the picture of how pocket plays into 
oracles and indexers and all that kind of stuff as well. But it will be mainly focused on the AI market will be really short um, and sweet and clear and uh, ultimately robust. It'll talk about the current capabilities and also to achieve some of the potentially super high leverage, but ultimately a little bit far off possibilities for Pocket explaining what it's missing. And um, and even I think in terms of what Steve is talking about now, it'll also highlight uh, where gaps are, where we need gateways that may be specialized in this area. They actually have a network, they have distribution and so on and so forth. So that is coming. That's going to start by a really small crack squad of three being led by Olshansky, uh, given his deep knowledge of um, the protocol. And along with Bowen, who's coming from Eigenlayer, and actually he's fantastically... Um, Technical has a, an amazing career and past in ML from Apple, um, but actually has a really good broader industry perspective as an outsider. So it's asking those right questions. And then um, Ramiro as well as the three that are driving this, but actually there'll be a much larger group of people supporting and feeding into this. The idea is that we have three people fully accountable. Um, they will be doing the key, the key drafts and turnover. So we actually don't have a, you know, that whole idea of a, a camel as a horse designed by a committee. <laughs> we have a, a small a, a group as possible that we can hold accountable for this, but then bringing in experts like like Steve uh, and anyone else in the community. I'm sure you're, you'll have opinions, um, Jinx and likely Shane and, and, and many, many others. So that process will start once they have a kind of a, a first draft up and running and start to bring in more people and ultimately bring that into public and ultimately publish that. I think the aim is... I'll, I'll share dates later on. I need to confirm with the the guys, but I think the aim is in a roughly six weeks to have a just a really clear articulation of Pocket's right to win in this area, what we can do right now, and what we're planning to do over you know kind of next and later to uh, enable the full possibility of this vision. So I'll I'll, I'll share a short post to form later on, but um, that's just kind of more of a a teaser to say watch this space. But um, yeah, really excited to unlock everyone who has um, these talents and interests um, in this area, because I think AI is a really exciting place, but actually the great thing about Pocket and what Shannon is enabling, we're going we're gonna to start to tackle many different data sources, whether that's in deep in oracles, indexers, and so on and so forth. So we need as many smart people thinking about this and ultimately working on the go-to-market for it as well. I think it's also important to understand that, like, I mean, we talked about this somewhat when we were just talking about chains in that people who are already running chain nodes for other networks are ideal recruitment targets for Pocket because it's a lot easier to set up a Pocket node on an existing chain node uh, than it is to load up change yourself as all of us who have done some bare metal node running in the community are quite familiar. Um, so I, I think with uh, the AI topic, this is another one where um, I've heard a lot of folks you know, say, you know, things along the lines of, well, are we expecting Pocket to, you know, host decentralized GPU? Because node runners don't have the ability to do that. And personally, no, I don't expect that at all. Um, I I would not in any way expect uh, Pocket node runners to be running GPU. But what I would expect is that if we can get uh, participants in other decentralized AI systems uh, and RAG providers and everything else adjacent to start participating in Pocket Network, uh, I think that's a much shorter lift than uh, trying to retrofit Pocket to support um, LLMs in a in a directly meaningful way. Uh, so this is another big opportunity for community outreach for everyone who is in another community uh, where this is relevant. Uh, you know, make some noise, bang the drum for Pocket, talk about it, and see if we can't get some interest there as well. Yeah, I, 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 I'm not writing up my my viewpoint on the the, the LLMs and hosting the open source LLMs. Um, I, I shared like my my thoughts in a not quite so elegant way uh, online, uh, but I would like to just reiterate why I, I I don't think that 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 is the the the, the biggest opportunity. Um, as like as an AI system. Uh, architect you know in and for large enterprises they it's a single model is 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 nothing anymore like there's a reason that they're all being open sourced even twitter open source and it's because they're a, a small part of the overall value of an a, a comp you know a, an ai system that that has a moat 
you know, you could give away the language models all day long. Uh, so for for developers on this call, um, you know, you know the, the the open source models are to AI system builders maybe what npm packages are or pip packages are to you know to to JavaScript node and Python developers respectively. It, you know it, they aren't high super high value for a developer that doesn't want to pay for access to another system yeah maybe there's some value there but for an enterprise that's trying to figure this out the, the costs are ir irrelevant uh, because the the costs are comparative to the costs of eliminating the human processes that they're paying for so they aren't looking at you know how much does it cost to run this model i mean it's it it just doesn't even come up Beyond that, um, there are big system providers that are hosting these models for free um, and will continue to do so and, and, and likely do so at, at, at bigger, like free tier levels, um, because the value of knowing what prompts are coming in for fine tuning reasons, it, it, there's a secondary market for that that is very significant. So unless the node runners in the pocket community know how to tap into that secondary market, they're not going to be able to compete because it will be a service that's that's given away. And um, I, you know, I, uh, uh, I, I, I hope, I, you know, I, I hope someone hears the the reasoning behind that. Um, but I, I, I think that that's not the the opportunity. The opportunity is to to be the, and I'm not even going to use the term rag because it confuses <laughs> it. Is, is to be the default API that all AI systems use to access all relevant blockchain data. So if if I was to you know be in a position to change Pocket's mission, I would change it to, you know, Pocket provides AI systems with seamless access to the world's most valuable blockchain data, period. period. That's sexy. One more point on that. <laughs> because you've got me on the roll. Um, <laughs> the, the global AI market is going to outpace the global blockchain market by 10 to 1 over the next three years. The growth in the global blockchain market will be driven by the AI market. Um, if you just look at it just from a macro market perspective, if we don't position for that, uh, it, it, it it's it's... Objectively, it's 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 not hard to do relays. You know, lots of other companies are doing it. Uh, you know, Infura, Anchor. You know, there's there's dozens and dozens. Um, literally, the only reason that the big players aren't doing it, Amazon, um, Google, is because the market isn't big enough yet. When it gets big enough, and it will likely because of AI, because once uh, millions and billions of AI agents need access to blockchain data, you can bet that the big providers will provide that, you know, absolutely. And the, 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 the middlemen will cease to be necessary. So for all node runners that are making money because they're able to resell some cloud providers infrastructure, that's just not a viable model. Uh, and uh, it doesn't need to be for pocket to be wildly wildly valuable but um but anyway i'm gonna stop ranting <laughs> yeah, I, uh, but thank you steve but i guess just to just to kind of end that point though because I, I just gotta i just want to be clear on the points we're arguing so i, I think um it's what you said at the end I, I think so my understanding from the latest survey that 1kx ran and anecdotally from the node runners pocket is over 50 percent on bare metal I do, and I do agree with you about not just wading into markets where you have no right to win. Um, however, I, I do believe in the deep in thesis and approach that a protocol that to Jinx's point, and we're starting obviously with, with blockchain uh, nodes because that's right in front of us, but that can expand to other data sources and pocket as this amazing transport layer. A protocol can achieve cost and scale benefits that others cannot if we onboard that latent infrastructure. And there's, and there's a few different reasons connected to that, obviously. But if we're onboarding people who already have that existing infrastructure, they're using it for other purposes, we onboard that. That massively reduces costs. And yeah, anyway, that, that's kind of the reason why Pocket can 
at scale have lower prices than some of the behemoths and actually why we expect at scale those behemoths whether they be cloudflare aws whoever you name it they could tap into pocket for the data sources we're supporting and hopefully that will include uh, some of the ai use cases that you're talking about steve and others but um yeah i just want to be clear on that because I guess I feel strongly about it because I, I did speak about it in Denver, but I think that the gateway strategy is, is absolutely core and we're in a, we're in OG deep in. And the reason we're doing this is because we do believe that a protocol can achieve cost and scale benefits that just simply isn't possible as a centralized provider. And that's connected to a protocol not needing legal contracts, doesn't need all those middlemen. It can efficiently connect supply and demand, reduce costs then to the real market rate and uh, not some kind of arbitrary margin that um, some execs or shareholders need to hit. So yeah, th- th- this is more of an aside. So I think we're largely in agreement, but I just don't want all of the good stuff you're saying to, to kind of uh, seem like a challenge to generally the deep in vision and, and what Pocket's trying to do. No, I, I think I, I think we're completely aligned, and um, the you know the, um, the 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 bare metal you know fifty percent running on bare, bare metal is is more like who owns that bare metal? Like what data center is that bare metal in? Is, is that, you know, in a data center that's owned by whoever is charging for the nodes and running the nodes? Uh, in the future, AWS could be the node runner for Pocket is my my point. Uh, and I, I think um, from what I understand about Shannon, you know, that that's a, a possibility. But just generally speaking, if, if you look at it, like from a game theory perspective, the everything in the AI space is going to um, push rapidly toward uh, a Nash equilibrium, which is basically everybody is going to push to the, the, the lowest possible uh, price point for getting the job done if it's a if it's an electronic thing. So there, there won't be there, there won't be any ambiguity around where value is and isn't. And, and, and that's what Pocket needs to position for. Oh, yeah, no, I, I don't think we're aligned. Cheers. Appreciate that, Steve. <laughs> I, I uh, have been noodling on this idea quite a bit, obviously, over the last few weeks as we've started to move more into this space. And one of the things that I think isn't obvious yet but will be soon and so we should start working now to prepare for it to be ahead of the game is that uh, pfof which is currently widely in use across uh, exchanges of various types um is probably going to be a strong um, market incentive in the future for ai or llm requests as well with uh distributed or decentralized uh collaborating agents. Um, I would expect that these networks will begin to compete against each other with uh, with request incentives and PFOF type programs. Um, so gateways in particular are well positioned, I think, looking forward to imagine what a PFOF marketplace might look like for data and start setting up to be able to uh, to support that as we begin experimenting with this uh, sort of marketplace of, of data options. Sayonara says, any discussion around running serverless Lambda functions on pocket nodes? That's an interesting question. Thoughts, anyone? Thresh says, as cool as that would be, it'd probably be a huge undertaking to implement that. I know Fluence has spent years trying to build that kind of system out and is just finally getting to main net. Yeah. Apparently not a lot of thoughts that folks would want to share. <laughs> I know that uh, there there are a lot of people who've suggested that, uh, you know, Pocket is sort of a, a decentralized AWS. But to me, I really think of like Akash more as a central or decentralized AWS or maybe Akash plus storage. Um, you know, con- containerized services, you're really selling compute there. And and we're not node runners. Pocket nodes aren't offering compute um, in the traditional sense of that word. Uh, it's it's really you know data communications that that is where our strong point is. 
um, and especially uh, redundant uh, decentralized communications to make it unstoppable. Uh, I would, you know, gateways have the opportunity to do a ton of additional stuff, and it'd be interesting to see some gateways kind of uh, uh, maybe blend uh, use of Pocket and Akash and storage, for instance. Um, like to to offer uh, one stop shopping for decentralized services, I think that would be super cool and a really great use case. Uh, if you can imagine like an actual decentralized AWS that offers the entire stack uh, across multiple protocols, uh, any startup founders who are out there listening, uh, you know, make that happen. And I'll, I'll get behind it. Um, but. Yeah, I, I don't really see us leaning heavily into the compute space, and I, I don't really think it would be a good idea. I mean, I would also wonder what the uh, real market value is, per se, because there's so many, like, that's where blockchain has, like, first came into, uh, uh, I, I would say, kind of, like, meaningful distributed uh, innovation, where there's a lot of serverless systems where you want to run uh, a serverless execution you want to do it in a uh a more or less you know uh secure environment um there's literally a number of projects in that space uh that are already doing that so i feel like pocket would kind of be reinventing the wheel where yeah. i feel like pocket is unique is we have specifically focused on heavy data sources so these aren't you know, little compute uh, executions. We're focused on running the heavy infrastructure, the heavy, the heavy data sources that people don't want to run. Um, so, anyways, uh, that that's where Pockets kind of found its niche, I think, in in the immediate uh, place. And I think that that there's a lot less competition in that. I think there's a lot more competition in the serverless space because there are literally endless projects uh that are doing this um 100 on the on the serverless so yeah so you know and then in the ai space you know they are going to need access to heavy data right uh things that require uh you know either a specific knowledge to run themselves uh or you know can be expensive when uh going through a specific company that's trying to maximize, you know, profits on uh, on running certain data, where Pocket could come in, and where Pocket ultimately the what Pocket's tokenomics will allow is people could start running heavy data sources at home uh, without the cost of needing to rent all this expensive infrastructure, like a blockchain node. They could run a blockchain node at home and get network average without having to have it uh, in three regions of the world and without having to run fifteen chains. Uh, you know, the idea of just running one blockchain in one location and you get network average, that's freaking awesome. And there can be other data sources as well, where professionals or specialists in certain areas know how to uh, uh, make make what uh, make heavy data efficiently accessible um, or efficiently, uh, you know, run and then pocket makes it accessible. So that's why I really love about the AI space, because they're going to need access to heavy data like steve mentioned um they do get access to like little uh light data like oh a little api call for weather you know that's something mm -hmm. they can do no problem uh getting access suddenly to uh a large you know uh a large data set like a blockchain to find specific information um that's going to be a challenge you know that will be a challenge so uh and who knows what other you know, heavy data sources uh, similar to blockchain are, you know, going to be kind of being created because now AIs need uh, more access to more types of data all over the place. So anyways, that's my that's my little uh, uh, my little thing. But the serverless space, um, lots of people are doing it. The heavy data uh, space, uh, the space that requires real hardware to run uh, in a persistent manner um that's what a lot of places haven't really done a good job with um and pocket is really the only one that uh that i know of that is actually moving in this space uh 
yeah, moving in the space. So I think it's definitely worth leaning into that more. Yeah, I agree completely. I mean, I, I think this is also like for for folks who are looking at gateway functionality, um, and also folks who are selling gateway functionality. If you're uh, if you're trying to, um, you know, recruit additional gateways or sell people on the promise of gateways, um, this is one of those things where uh, gateways don't have to be just pocket specific. Like part of the 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 magic in gateways is that you can value add in a number of directions, right? So if if you are like, I mean, a Dermot in his comment above says uh, Akash is straight up hosting, uh, and Pocket's more about specialized hosting and DevOps for data. Um, if you are a gateway provider who has a specific niche specialty, and you can tie together multiple services in this space and use Pocket as the backbone for all of it for all of your data comms, um, like there are whole entirely new categories of businesses that can be built on Pocket Network uh, when you start to think of the entire Web3 space or deep end space as sort of a, a mix and match offering of services that may make up a uh, AWS type company. And that can be super highly specialized. You can be doing just one specific kind of service that's a multi-chain, uh, uh, multi-protocol service and really like double or triple dipping across all of them. I think I think what you're saying here, Jinx, with the gateways is truly Pocket's secret sauce. Yep. Um, and what I'm uh, one of part of the Shannon overview that uh, one of the sections is about why gateways and uh, the argument uh, or, or what what I'm presenting is this concept of of why gateways and within the Web three space, uh, you know the the gist of it is within the Web three space, uh, there's a lot of utility tokens. But anytime you utilize a utility token, you're always sacrificing uh, something. You're either sa sacrificing uh, uh, it's either harder to onboard, right, or it's more uh, uh, you get you know you have quality of service issues. Uh, because it's trying to be fully decentralized, or you're uh, you're getting oh shoot what sorry I just had a a, a brain uh, a brain fart there. Anyways, what I was saying is there's all these sacrifices that you have to make. Oh, features you have a lot less features, so there's a lot of things that you have to give up uh, that a lot of platforms give up in order to be decentralized. Where Pocket is unique is gateways are literally a UX layer, so a user experience layer where we're intentionally building into our business model and literally in the protocol model, the ability for people that are focused on user experiences to create user experiences with data, create user experiences with, uh, uh, with however they wanna charge, whether it's through the pocket token, through some other crypto means, uh, or through USD itself. They, you can have businesses that are entirely focused on user experience and they don't have to run any of the heavy data infrastructure on the back end. Um, that's, that's why Pocket is significantly unique to any other utility token out there. No one, no utility token has literally a layer built into it that's entirely dedicated to user experience. Pocket is the first. And so if you want the Web3 alternative to really take off uh, and to actually provide better uh, service, then the centralized guys. Uh, not only do you have to have unstoppable infrastructure on the back end, which is the protocol itself, but you also have to have a user experience that uh, that can compete. And through Pocket, by making a user experience layer, there is literally unlimited number of experiences that can be built off of Pocket. Uh, and so it, it, that's what's just super unique about Pocket is it, you've got the one side of this super heavy data infrastructure that you don't have to run yourself. You can get cheap access to it. That's fantastic. And it's literally built in such a manner for these kind of uh, businesses to build user experiences off of. I mean, Grove literally raised, uh, had an awesome raise for building gateways, for building their gateway. Like not building the infrastructure on the back end in terms of like 
the the blockchain infrastructure, but on just the user experience, like the services that they can build utilizing Pocket. Like how powerful is that? That you know you can have people raising on simply, you know, creating experiences and, and creating services that utilize Pocket. So that's that's where we're completely different from every single utility token that exists. Uh, we actually have a dedicated user experience layer that can expand, go anywhere, and it's completely un unlimited. Uh, and we're actually building the tools and everything needed to make that possible uh, and to make that as seamless as possible. But uh, yeah, no, every, every other utility token has a user experience. And if you're going to use their product, you have to adapt their user experience. And Pocket is looking at the market and realizing that's not where value is. Value is just allowing, uh, is allowing anyone creating user experiences to plug into Pocket. And uh, then that's exactly where we get to where what you were saying, Jinx, um, because then the gateway can add any, you know, any kind of services and uh, that, that are Pocket, maybe some that are not Pocket. It doesn't matter. What Pocket enables is with the data sources that it provides direct access to it uh, without needing the heavy infrastructure uh, and having it be unstoppable. So that's just one of the cool things about Pocket. So some of that will be in a uh, uh, de definitely a little uh, a little turned down version of that, uh, but uh, we'll have that in the uh, Shannon overview, which we're going to be sharing. There has never been a better time to be a front end engineer because the amount of backend tooling that's already created out there that just requires you to have an idea of how it can be implemented and to have enough knowledge to build a front end to that is just extraordinary. I mean, Web3 has has really opened up some massive opportunities for that. And Pocket sits right in the center of all of it. So, you know, starting from the perspective of, I wanna build on Pocket and then what all else can can work into that same ecosystem, especially as we keep building out tooling within this ecosystem, uh, I think that the options are significant. So huge encouragement if you're a front end uh, uh, engineer type who sees uh, uh, you know something that uh, that needs to be fixed or or some data that needs to be uh, retrieved in some meaningful way, come play. Um, uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, so this is my first com uh, ecosystem call, probably. So, like, uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so, uh, I completely echo, thank you. Uh, I completely echo what Shane said, and uh, as like one of the front end person building uh, uh, as part of like a gateway builder team, uh, I sort of had that enlightenment moment that uh holy shit like this is crazy like we uh uh we can do so many things uh as a like a relay provider uh one of the thing is which is like tapping into the pocket network uh but uh, there are like other things such as like uh doing decentralized stories or um i mean llms for one and uh yeah, I mean, basically tapping into any sort of serverless compute. Uh, so I'm uh, like really excited about that. But uh, uh, one question I have is like how uh, permissionless uh, it is to like type into the um, uh, the fleet of pocket node runners. Like if we were like, how is that marketplace dynamics? Like, uh, I mean, uh, I hope I'm able to like uh, make sense, but like how easy it is like if we want to experiment uh, with a service and uh, which is like, let's say not a traditional RPC that Pocket is doing, if it's somewhat adjacent like decentralized storage, um, how permissionless is that to interact with node runners? Well, uh, once uh, Shannon goes live, which we're hoping will be end of Q2, beginning of Q3, Shane, yeah, maybe, um, then we actually get to a place where we have truly permissionless access to the protocol. Um, and, and so we believe that users are going to be roughly divided into two use cases. Um, a, a significant portion of users um, running through gateways as they do now, um, simply because 
uh, gateways provide a performance layer, a value add layer, additional uh, ancillary functionality. Uh, and you've got somebody else, you know, doing the maintenance on maintaining your access. Uh, you know, when you've got a, a dedicated portal with dedicated portal engineers, uh, you know that uh, your your relays are being optimized and, and uh, all the rest of that. Whereas permissionless access, of course, you own it. So it's going to be on you to make sure that uh, that's well optimized. But with Shannon, uh, full permissionless access to the protocol uh, in all aspects is supported, as I understand it. Shane, you want to fill that out? Yeah, uh, that that's what is uh, that that's what is going to be fully enabled uh, with Shannon is the permissionless access to Pocket. Um, so whether you're a application that just wants that really raw decentralized access to uh, blockchain RPC, or if you're a gateway creating experiences, um, either or, uh, Shannon will be permissionless. Um, there will also kind of be a choose your own adventure where on one side you could have uh, you can just integrate Pocket's SDKs directly uh, and get very, you know, raw access directly to the protocol. Uh, or you could deploy a tool uh, like Gateway Server uh, that will be optimized for Shannon so that you can uh, access, uh, you can just deploy a container inside your infrastructure. And then for gateways, that will be, you know, that will be their, uh, the value add because it's just like one container and then you suddenly have access to uh, to the whole of pocket network with a lot of features baked in that you're just running locally in that container. So, uh, so it's a super cool experience. So you can either, yeah, you have kind of both experiences available. But um, in terms of when, yeah, we're shooting for you know basically summer end of summer. This is the this is the hope for uh, when we launch, but we we can't really say anything for sure because currently we have our private test net, which uh, was just launched a few weeks ago. It's going super well. We're getting tons of feedback. Uh, and then we're going to be transitioning to the public test net. And then with the public test net, that will be where folks could actually start trying to test some things, trying to build some new integrations, things of that nature. Uh, and then from there, obviously, depending on how that will go, that will dictate then where we go with mainnet. But it, uh, yeah, it, it is just one of those things where uh, we're hoping for, you know, uh, late summer uh, as, you know, as a uh, mainnet. But none of that can be taken to the bank yet because we're still in the testnet phase. Um, but things are moving really rapidly there. So there is a lot of cool, exciting things uh, that. There's been a lot of cool, exciting progress the past few uh, few weeks since it launched. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I would love to play around with the test net. Um, I'm guess uh, I like follow up question would be like uh, I'm guessing uh, the current uh, pocket uh, network that is running uh, as a main net, I think, uh, would transition into uh, the Cosmos uh, related. Uh, uh, pocket roll thing, uh, I guess that's called Shannon, and there would be a some sort of merge event, uh, right? Uh, am I understanding that correct? I'm not sure if I heard your question there. Um, yeah, uh, my question would be like uh, similar to like how ethereum transitioned from one sort of uh, mechanism that was uh, proof of work to proof of stake uh, where like uh, there was a major transition from how ethereum worked is shannon upgrade uh, like a similar like equivalent of that like where you are transitioning from like completely a different blockchain oh. Uh, yes. System. I mean, just Another. just in a short answer, yes. <laughs> it, it is. Uh, uh, it, I mean, obviously, it's not changing uh, the the consensus mechanism from the from the perspective of proof of work to proof of stake. Still going to be proof of stake. Um, but as far as it going from its own L1 to to being a roll up. Uh, and to existing within another L1, like the, there, there, are, and, and to being entirely permissionless, there, these are major, major changes. Yes. 
yeah, it, that does, that's an awesome question. That's exactly what it will enable is that level of a shift in terms of how their uh, economies work. So that was a huge shift in how the Ethereum economy works. Uh, and Shannon will be an equally large shift uh, than how Pocket works. Um, and, uh, you know, the the one of the advantages that Ethereum went through is uh, it became more scalable in terms of uh, it wasn't bound uh, specifically by hardware anymore, um, which, you know, some people have plus and minus uh, views on that. But uh, for the most part, I think most people see it as it definitely unleashed a lot more potential within Ethereum uh, because it wasn't bound by hardware itself. Uh, and so Pocket is kind of having the same thing where certain things are being unlocked uh, and unbound where uh, they were previously bound. So, uh, and it is actually relatively accurate because the consensus mechanism within Pocket is changing. It is a completely different consensus mechanism because uh, it's built off of, uh, well, for one, the consensus mechanisms actually, uh, it's actually, it could be anything we want it to be, which is why we've uh, explored uh, Celestia, why we've explored, you know, the, the protocol team last year did a lot of exploring into a lot of different, you know, L2s or, uh, you know, uh, modular chains like Celestia. Um, but because it's built off of the uh, Cosmos SDK, uh, we anywhere that the Cosmos SDK works, we can have VR validation. Um, so right now our testnet is just a, it, it's using the, the COT, um, the um, Comet BFT uh, consensus, which is native to the Cosmos SDK. We're not really running as a rollup or anything. Um, but that's the beauty about how it's how the protocol is being designed. And the reason we went with the Cosmos SDK is because we could ultimately take that, uh, take Shannon and apply it to different uh, different validation technologies, whether that's Celestia, whether that's, you know, becoming a roll up on some other uh, DA layer. It it. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Our consensus mechanism can actually be changed. And the Cosmos SDK itself just a operates as a framework that all the network logic uh, uh, exists on. So anyways, maybe that's a little more technical than what uh, uh, the answer was. But um, yeah, ultimately, we're not bound. That's the important part. Uh, we're not bound to any type of validation layer. We can really choose whatever is best for Shannon itself. Um, which to be fair, there, yeah, there's uh, because of how we're, where we're coming about things in the current state of the cosmos ecosystem really does open up a lot of potential that, uh, yeah, that didn't exist before. So there's a lot of cool, interesting ideas. All of them are being explored, but ultimately we can make the best decision that, uh, is for Shannon. And we're really excited that we have that flexibility. Well, we're now at five past the top of the hour, so uh, we'll call it here and I'll let y'all get back to your day. Uh, super appreciate y'all spending time with us. Again, shout out to uh, uh, the AI chat channel and Discord. If you're interested in these topics, please uh, make sure that you jump in there and add your thoughts and uh, follow along as uh, we work on some of those things. And we will see you again next week. Same time, same channel. Thanks, y'all.